Honorable Consul General, welcome to this interview. I'm so, so happy to have you with us to talk about this exhibition, the permanent exhibition of photographs of Greece by Robert McCabe at the Consulate General of Greece in Boston as a civic medium in flux. That's what I consider it myself. And uh, this is for an article that is going to be published at the special issue Civic Media and Flux, which is part of the journal which I am editing at the Engagement Lab at uh, Emerson College, as you know, which is called the Journal of Civic Media. I don't know if you would like me to say a few things what the mission of the journal is before, but I think I have already talked to you about that. And or also primarily we focus on all kinds of new media that um, are considered as a, as a process of democratization across the globe and and we want to give voice to all diverse communities across the globe so this particular issue is looking for new ways at the media especially as the the way uh, new media have been transformed during the pandemic and even the zoom is one of these platforms that creates these bridges and and changes uh, completely the landscape of, of new media. It is a pleasure and it is an, an honor to uh, be with you and to be working with you. We have done many things uh, together and uh, th thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak about the, the wonderful contributions of Robert McCabe and how this uh, exhibition uh, changed um, the way we, we approach uh, public buildings, public diplomacy, um, and also um, some of the perceptions that uh, during the crisis may have affected our uh, our country. And uh, I would also uh, like to praise your approach uh, and the tools you have been harnessing. Uh, the key here is the word you mentioned, democratization. I mean, sharing and giving the opportunities uh, to uh, diverse uh, crowds and people who don't necessarily have access to uh, paid uh, or to uh, written or printed material to uh, gain access to this information. So thank you very much for highlighting this uh, exhibition. Thank you. And, and you really use the perfect world, this open public space, and you made the the building itself and this institution, the consul, the, the consul general of Greece in Boston, a public space of a unique aesthetic experience. It's really a civic project, in my opinion, a civic project that is similar. I can draw this parallel to the fifth century Athens where the city was a museum. <laughs> so in that train of thought, I think, the movement that you made, the initiative that you took to make this amazing in itself, a masterpiece exhibition that my KB, to bring it to this building, this beautiful building, by the way, is, is just what constitutes this exhibition and media and flux, in my opinion. And so let me explain a little bit more what uh, how this idea came to me and then we're going to go deeper into that idea of this exhibition being a medium a civic medium in flux so when i first encountered robert mccabe's breathtaking photo of sadorini perissa from ancient theatre at the waiting room at the consulate general of greece in boston where before I used to sit and patiently peruse the small ads on the hanging board until my turn would come to get my job done, whatever passport would that be, whatever uh, certificate. I was now introduced to a new transformative and reawakening aesthetic experience. I had no doubt that I was in front of a new form of civic media, one that is in constant flux in terms of an ongoing aesthetic experience cultural exchange and civic engagement. The exhibition itself is a unique work of art 
that as you yourself said in the catalog, I quote you, has immortalized in a unique way, a part of the spirit, geometry, light and identity of a Greece that is receding in history, end of quote. And again, opening quotes, which is not only a visual poetry of aesthetic perfection, but a treasure of Greek cultural heritage. However, as I already said, your initiative to bring it to the building of the Consulate General of Greece in Boston automatically turned it into a civic project, a civic medium in flux, and the Consulate General of Greece in Boston became a vehicle, a living organism, an interactive museum, a point of reference, and a space of connections for its visitors. And this is exactly what I see as a brilliant initiative on your part an initiative that redefines the meaning of the role and the institution of the Consulate General, which aims not only at serving the public, but also as a cultural ambassador that constantly provides cultural transformative experiences that reshape, induce introspection, and redefine its visitors' identities as they come in constant and in content with a plurality of images of Greece from the past, in other words, it is a permanent beacon, and here not pun intended, Bacon Street, of culture and a fixed point of reference, or to use your own words again from the catalog of the exhibition, quote, an enduring bridge between Boston, the Athens of American Greece, captured through the eyes of Philippine American photography. So that being said, I would like you to take us back to the roots of this initiative. In other words, do you also see this permanent photo exhibition as a civic project, a civic medium in flux? And how did you conceive this idea? And the floor is now yours. <laughs> First of all, at the end of a very uh, tiring and frustrated day, you made my day. <laughs> and I'm so flattered and uh, really overwhelmed by you know, your comments. Uh, I think no one could uh, convey better than you uh, in the way you did uh, the message and the spirit of this uh, uh, exhibition. And uh, uh, it is a project co conceived in the making actually, because uh, initially I had the idea of how can we bring some life uh, into these empty uh, walls. And at the same time, how can we make these walls a bridge between the US and, and Greece? And how can we promote Greece? And whatever way I thought at that time of uh, having an American photographer uh, who has captured uh, the landscapes and the spirit of Greece come and feature his, his work here at the Greek consulate in a way constituting constitu and building a bridge between um, uh, Greece and, and, and the US. After many exchanges and all happened uh, by accident because I, I happened to check all the emails of the consulates and one of them was sent by Robert McCabe and I, I didn't know that he had a connection with Boston, I didn't know he was here and I, uh, I went to see his, his work at the American Archaeological Congress which was at Copley Square in, 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 in Boston and then I liked the pictures and I said why can't we bring these pictures and uh, replace the existing ones at the waiting room uh, and maybe you know bring some uh, life in Greece some bring some bring more Greece into the Greek country and then after a lot of changes uh, the uh, the photographer kindly offered uh, through the help of a sponsor his son uh, to print photographs uh, tailored for uh, the consulate and we uh, installed 39 photographs uh, of archaeological monuments uh, from Greece. Uh, Santorini is a kind of a, an exception from the general rule that highlights archaeological landscapes. Uh, and then after one year, after the complete trans transformation of the consulate, I reached out to Mr. McCabe and I, I asked more photos, photos of uh, maritime landscapes of Greece and to, to transform one more room. And there we installed photos of Patmos, of Mykonos, and of the island of Santorini, uh, photos highlighting the maritime and island traditions of, of, of Greece. 
So it was a project in the making, and then this created some great uh, attention. We we had um, WGBH and its cultural editor Jared Bowen, uh, who visited uh, the consulate. Then we had a couple of articles in the Greek and uh, U.S. Uh, uh, press, um, and then uh, schools started visiting the consulate. Usually, you. Uh, you don't want to visit the consulate because it's a waste of time. You don't want to do the paperwork. But then we tried to, you know, um, to combine this experience, which we tried to minimize and digitalize, uh, with uh, some um, cultural experience. And uh, this also provided us an opportunity to highlight Greece as a tourist uh, uh, destination. Um, last uh, week, we... Uh, we had a, an inaugural event for the new uh, direct flight connecting Boston to Athens. Uh, and so I started my, my speech by highlighting how important it is to, um, that we have these photographs here at the House of Greece, inviting all the guests to come and visit Greece. And at uh, the same time, these photographs uh, also uh, point out and underline the importance of, uh, of the preservation of our cultural and natural uh, landscape. This is unfortunately in, in a Greece that uh, does no longer exist, but still we can save and preserve uh, our, uh, our landscapes and our archeological sites and try to uh, conciliate touristic development uh, with the preservation of, uh, of our heritage. So that's uh, also uh, another way, you know, for these photographs to make awareness of what we should do uh, in, in the future to preserve our heritage. Absolutely. And, and uh, I really like the, the point that you made that you opened it also to the schools and to visit this. So this educational component that a civic project entails is part of it and also this ongoing influx continuous dialogue on Greece uh, by various entities without any exclusion is, is just extraordinary so one um, of the favorite mm -hmm. games of the children uh, who visited consulate was uh, hide and seek and also <laughs> count how many photographs are from the Acropolis how many are black and white which is the only color photograph. So they, we did this kind of games mm -hmm. uh, along with other educational programs we have yeah. when, where kids are visiting. That is really amazing. And so this, um, my perception and your perception of these collections as a civic medium in flux is truly captured in, uh, by John Camp's words, the curator who wrote in the catalog and I quote, this is a collection not to be rushed through, the, but rather one to be absorbed slowly with time for contemplation. We're invited by it to consider our own associations and memories. On display are all the different facets which have drawn foreigners to Greece over the years, end of quote. And also as I was trying to dig deeper into the civic element of the exhibition, I was thinking that it is not only its display at a building open to the public, a civic space that is open to every citizen and provides passports, but also this exhibition has a tremendous capacity for storytelling. And this is a very important component of civic media, storytelling. As it, it is written um, in the interview with Mr. McCabe, published last year, uh, I quote, from photographing the islands before severe earthquakes to capturing the excavations at Mycenae and sites before their restoration, your photos are not just charming and captivating, they are storytelling and along with their captions, they are encyclopedic, a documentation of various places and areas that were destined to change and evolve, end of quote. So this capacity for storytelling prompted from each photograph opens the path to a world of connections and empathy to the visitors and to the children that you uh, mentioned, especially at this early age, it's so important to cultivate their empathy. 
So as a result, one feels that has undergone a transformative experience, perhaps similar, as I mentioned earlier, to the experience that Greeks would have experienced. So do you consider this permanent exhibition as uh, such a project and um, an educational component? I, it was an honor for, for us to have this message uh, of John Camp. John Camp, Camp is, the, is a legendary figure in archaeology, the director of of the ancient Agora excavation in Athens for the American School of Classical Studies. So, you know, he, he knows what an Agora is, what a civic and the liberation space um, and Agora uh, constitutes. And I think that uh, you, you described very well how, um, how these photos can make us reflect uh, and, uh, uh, and and use our space as a civic space. And what is the message of these photographs? Ancient Greece, classical Athens. What is the single, you know, most important characteristic of uh, ancient uh, Greece? That's democracy. So that's the definition of uh, the liberation or the, the political system of of uh, governments that is based on the liberation. So if these uh, photographs make us reflect a little bit on our heritage and all uh, on, our, on, uh, on what, how important democracy and the classical heritage is, uh, was and is still in our times, then I think that would be, you know, a success of this uh, exhibition. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with, uh, with, with what you said. I cannot express it as well as you, but I agree very well, much. You did express it by using the term Agora. It's perfect. It's exactly what I was looking for. And I'm so thrilled that you used it. And so, um, and there's another element besides storytelling and this open forum, the democratic process. It's the, besides the storytelling, it's um, what happens after the continues the continuing uh, dialogue about what has been experienced because uh, what I saw in, in the same interview, uh, Mr. McCabe uses the Instagram platform and he posts posts the same photographs and he receives comments and there are moments where people who were photographed so many years before they recognize themselves in the pictures so another dialogue continues and it's just extraordinary so in that sense that this is a new media that is never stopping this dialogue is a continuum back and forth of, of awareness of raising so that's the the, the his digital uh, Instagram account is McCabe Photos and I'm going to read one uh, excerpt from uh, this interview that I mentioned earlier. The um, journalist asks him, I quote, while some of your projects have been delayed by the pandemic, you decided to use Instagram as a modern way to communicate with your audience. Is it because of this social medium's primarily visual character? And then he's answering, March 30th, 2021, will mark the one year anniversary of my posting on Instagram, at McCabe Photos. And the medium is addictive, he says. At times, it's humbling. For example, when one of your favorite images draws a yawn. I have some regular followers whose loyalty and engagement I really appreciate. There are some wonderful images shown on Instagram. A big bonus, I have gotten some identifications of people and places that are very valuable. A lady traveling deck class on the Desfina with um, her accordion in 1954 was identified by her daughter. I think some of the inputs from Instagram will be useful in selecting and captioning images for books. It is also fun to see the consistency and creativity in the images of some of those photographers I follow. I follow. And of course, so it's really fascinating what is this after the exhibition moment that is transferred into the digital world and the dialogue continues and the flux of ideas continues and that is the other digital agora that takes shape thanks to that first incentive, that first uh, moment of the exhibition of the 
public forum where uh, we have now at the general consulate. Isn't it amazing how uh, an 85 year old uh, photographer uh, uh, finds uh, new ways of expression and sharing to the public? That's another uh, kind of democratization uh, mm -hmm. of uh, public art. And this, uh, this took place and this discovery by McCabe of Instagram took place uh, during uh, during the pandemic so it was a time where you know so many of us were confined and we were visually hungry and we we were searching for a means uh, and a vehicle to escape and I think in many ways these photographs of uh, of Robert took us back to a different Greece a different era to to uh, landscapes of innocence to uh, return to our traditions, to our folkloric uh, identities, to our origins. Um, and uh, I found this uh, fascinating. And uh, what was amazing was the engagement of the public, uh, the thousands of likes, of, you know, how, how much this new kind of uh, uh, public exhibition created engagement. Uh, around uh, around quality uh, photographs and uh, around uh, art that is uh, so special. So it is, you know, I'm going back to the more traditional photographs. Uh, uh, I have I have a photograph of McCabe uh, below me at the consulate. It's from uh, from the Stillest Will from from Athens. Uh, so. Uh, you know, it's such a privilege to to have this uh, um, this, this art uh, featured and displayed uh, here at the House of Greece in uh, such a such an important city, Boston, the Athens of America. Uh, so the, yeah, such a center for you know spiritual and academic uh, um, research and study. Uh, so I'm you know I hope that you know many more thousands will come to receptions and events at the consulate and will you know enjoy this uh, this nice uh, this nice photographs of uh, of greece i'm sure that uh, there couldn't be a better place to host this permanent exhibition it's really fantastic and and the cycle continues. We have the Agora, the ancient Agora, thanks to your initiative, and then the Agora on the digital plane, and then all together continue the dialogue about raising awareness, what Greece was, what is and what will be, and how it affects us and our uh, own um, individualities. And you know, just, uh, just today, um, we got a message from uh, last week actually but today an american citizen uh, who said uh, my husband in the 70s removed a, mar a marble a piece of marble from the acropolis and i would like to return it and today she she brought it back and this is the piece of marble oh my and, god uh, <laughs> it drove you know although that was i don't know how to characterize the act of her husband but still you know after 50 years they decided that this piece of marble has to return to its homeland. And I think this, this, this was a great move. Nobody knew that it was removed and you know she could have kept it, but she said, no, its place is in Greece and its homeland. And I think that's, that's, that's very important as we try to highlight the, you know, how, how crucial it is to reunite the Parthenon marbles how crucial it is to reestablish the uh, the architectural integrity of uh, of of the Parthenon and of Acropolis, which is such an emblematic monument uh, of a ecumenical dimension, such a unique symbol of democracy in uh, ancient Greece. So she came here. I gave her a catalog of the Maccabe exhibition. I gave her to uh, to the consulate and. I think you know we gained one more tourist for for, for for Greece because now she wants to go back to Greece 
uh, and travel and, uh, uh, and enjoy these nice landscapes. What an extraordinary gesture this is. And it, the best proof of what you did with this initiative is really working, is the Agora. This is what engages the public and, and creates an awareness that is really civic. What you just described is a moment, a momentum of, a, of an act that uh, is civic awareness. And it's, it's a symbol for the larger, uh, as you said, um, act that has to be done, the reunion, you know, bringing back the Parthenon marbles. And I hope um, this will be heard. <laughs> um, so I want to commend you on this initiative and uh, I want to congratulate you on this and many other initiatives that are so meaningful and, and, and truly civic. Um, I want also before I let you go, because I know you had a very difficult day, you have a very uh, long day. Um, it closed very well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to hear more about your passion as a photographer. So this passion so well displayed in this perfect <laughs> uh, exhibition stems from your own. Yeah, I'm, I'm the curator of this exhibition, I didn't mention. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Robert McCabe let me pick up and select uh, which photos I wanted to place in which, uh, you know, in, the, in any of the walls. So that's, and I'm grateful for the freedom uh, mm -hmm. he granted to me. But um, uh, my passion with photography started in Turkey when I was posted as a diplomat uh, 15 years ago. Uh, my um, my first professor of photography, I I believe was a was a Turkish friend who showed me you know the basic stuff, and then I I learned most of the things I know alone. I Turkey provides many opportunities to travel, and then I traveled a lot in Russia. I traveled in Greece, and then uh, professional. Uh, engagements and obligations didn't allow me very much to do what makes me happy. I mean, from time to time, I have done it here also in, in, in Boston when it snows, when during the pandemic, the, uh, the city was an interesting uh, object of photography. It, it all started with uh, when, uh, when a friend somehow scolded me, telling me, you are a you're a diplomat, you don't know even how to focus. You need to learn how to take <laughs> good photographs. You, have unique, you will have unique opportunities to see landscapes, people, and, and countries. So he kind of pushed me to, to learn how to use the medium. And, uh, um, and it's a, you know, it is a very enjoyable uh, uh, hobby. I'm so glad that he, he pushed you to, to this direction. The, the result was obvious of, of a, a wonderful curatorial project for you. Then well, you know, one art through. takes you to another and then from photography, you can move to painting because the rules of composition are the same. As you see here in the photograph of, of Santorini, uh, all, the photograph is divided between almost one third and two thirds. So you can see the whiter sky and then you see the the round line that uh, directs the eye from the right upper part to the central uh, bottom part. And then you see the object, which are is the two bowies situated uh, on the, you know, on the left, which makes an impact. Uh, it would have been different if they were at the center of the, of the photograph, but you have them on the left so you you can you know gaze and see the landscape and uh, this is this is an incredible composition and the same rules of composition are in photography in, uh, in painting and then you go to the other representative arts sculpture and it goes on and on and then and this is a it's a fascinating uh, it is a fascinating 
you know, the way to see things. And it's, it's a fascinating note to close this interview because what you just described is this media in flux, this, <laughs> this rule barriers between arts and media and, and you so well described those um, blurring of, of um, uh, boundaries between the various media and I'm so thankful that you gave us this opportunity. I, it has been really a, a great pleasure talking with you about this amazing exhibition that is definitely now I can say for sure is considered a media in a medium in flux and civic medium in flux. The, the pleasure is is mine and uh, maybe once we invite also uh, uh, Robert Robert McCabe to join us to to have also his views on uh, on on this and the other uh, exhibitions. Absolutely, I would really love to have a, a follow up with him, all of us together. Um, let's plan it. And if they, I'm, I'm I'm trying to wrap up, but then I always open <laughs> it after, so it's never ending. I know I'm horrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, and a wonderful initiative. Uh, congratulations, and again. Uh, good luck with uh, your new position. <laughs> Thank you so much. All the best. <laughs>